Hello my nerdlings. If you're new here, my name is Nikki. Welcome to my channel where we get nerdy. Um, so today I want to do a video that I've been putting off for a little bit, uh, mainly because I didn't know how much I wanted to do it. Um, and that is a full spoilery review of the Stalking Jack the Ripper series by Carrie Maniscalco. Um, I'll talk about each book independently um, and the whole overall arc of the plot line and everything um, and tell you what I think about the books and I'll do them in reading order and at the end I'll tell you my opinion as which books are the best order if that makes sense. So the first book in the series is Stalking Jack the Ripper by Carrie Maniscalco. This is about Audrey Rose. She is a young woman that wants to become a mortician. Um, and of course, this is set in the late 1800s, so it's technically not ladylike. It's not a profession a woman should be in at this point because of her father's status or status. She should be worried about tea parties and that kind of th stuff, you know, very Bridgerton type. Um, but she doesn't. She is right enthralled with science, loves science. Um, her uncle is the mortician and she's kind of like his apprentice, but she only gets to observe him. She doesn't get to actually go to the classroom kind of thing. Um, and then they, you know, stumble on to Jack the Ripper and the whole investigation of that so that's where the non-spoilery parts are going to end from here on forward I will have spoilers if you do not want to hear the spoilers you might want to get to get in if you're fine with hearing spoilers stick around so as I'm gonna give you a minute to click off the video as you read through this, you're getting a feel of it's got to be her dad. And like, I was dead convinced it was her dad or it was this really weird cop that her dad was trying to betroth her to. Um, nope, it wasn't. Um, on the, and at one point I thought it was Thomas Cresswell. I'm sorry, Thomas. I, I now know that you are Bay and just amazing um but no you find out that it's her brother and of course i didn't really catch that it was her brother until the minute it revealed and then when i reread this i'm like why didn't i see the flags <laughs> like her dad was just a red herring the whole time <laughs> um and the whole reason, so her brother, there's a belief that her brother didn't actually kill anybody. He just wanted their organs um, because he wanted to try and bring their mother back to life. Um, and so it's just, it was more or less that he was a grieving son that couldn't handle not having his mother around. Um... So he was trying to make it better for everybody, but it didn't work, obviously, um, because that's not how it works. You can't take somebody else's organs and just reanimate somebody. Um, so they, you know, the whole thing is that once Audrey and Thomas figure out it is Nathan and Nathan is dead, ta-da, no problems ever again. But notice there are four books in the series. And this is only book one. Book two is Hunting Prince Dracula. In this book, Audrey and Thomas are on their way to a school to learn about mortuary science. Uh, excuse me. And it is in, yep, why can't I think of the country? Romania. And it's in Romania. So you're like thinking... Dracula, like the Count Dracula, that Bram Stoker 
wrote about that type. Um, but it's not. Like, okay, you find out that Thomas is a descendant of, apparently in this part of Romania, there's like two possible kings and queen lines, um, two monarchy lineages, and he's one of them. Um, but because his mother married an Englishman, and he grew up in England, he didn't know much about this whole Romania side. Um, and anyways, so they're in this school, people are getting drained of their blood. Like, there's no evisceration or anything like that, they're just completely drained of blood. Um, kind of like when, I don't know if you've ever been hunting, you go and you kill a deer or a moose and you hang it up so all the blood rushes out before you butcher it that kind of but they still have all their organs that's what's the weird part too it's like it's been siphoned from them but anyways um so as you read through the story i was absolutely i had no clue i was like what the frig is going on like I didn't have any inclinations of, oh, it's got to be this person, or it's got to be that person. There was none of that at all. I was just like, okay. And then someone goes missing, and you never find her body, like you find everybody else's. And so you think, I didn't think she was dead. I didn't think she was the bad guy. I didn't, I thought that maybe because she was just a ward of her uncle and not an actual student that her uncle sent her away somewhere because she was a flirt. That's all I thought. No. Apparently, Prince Dracula should have been Princess Dracula because this is all about Elizabeth Bathory. I always butcher her last name. The Countess. The woman that literally used to bathe in the blood of virgins to keep her youthful appearance and like would drink blood and then i she actually ends up dying um because of how much blood she took in like the heavy metals like her body couldn't handle it and that's how she ended up dying if i'm remember correctly but anyways this is about elizabeth bathory this isn't even about count dracula but then again dracula was inspired by Elizabeth Bathory. So, do with that what you will. And this is finally where, like, Audrey and Thomas, like, really develop a relationship. Just saying, if that's a thing for you. Next, we have Escaping from Houdini. This is the third book. It's on a Titanic-esque cruise liner. Um, that there's a night circus on the cruise liner and people keep dying as a result of the night circus. And so you're convinced it's somebody in the night circus. You want it to be this guy that, uh, his, it's, his name starts with an M. What was it? Mephisto. Dophiles? I can't pronounce it. I know his real name's Aiden. Um, you want it to be him because he's trying to think that he's trying to weasel his way in with Audrey and like completely write Thomas out of it. Like there's some I honestly think it's like Audrey's stage where she wants the bad boy, not the good boy. So she's going she's really intrigued by Aiden. Um really really intrigued by Aiden. Um, there's where she has kissed him. She spends nights with him, like not in his quarters, but like there are times where she is alone with him after dark. That's really taboo in the 1800s. Um, and as you keep reading through it, you, there's, it's honestly ends up being a whole story about this jilted lover, if I remember correctly. He, this 
guy ends up killing these people because he wants to be with um, this girl and the parents said no because he's poor is what it boils down to and so he just starts killing people yeah um, so yeah this definitely has a little I wouldn't say a love triangle because there's no like connection between Aiden and Thomas other than Thomas fucking hates his guts it's more of a love train Thomas wants Audrey Audrey wants Aiden so Escaping from Houdini, the entire thing is set on a boat, too. Like, the entire story is on the cruise liner. And then last, we have Capturing the Devil. So, this whole series is written on the theory that there's actually a documentary based on it, I've watched it, that this guy thinks that his great 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 whatever uncle or grandfather who he knows is H.H. H. Holmes he's convinced is also Jack the Ripper I mean it's a great theory do I think it's true I don't know I'd have to see more evidence but it is a great theory um anyways so capturing the devil this we are in Chicago it's the World Fair it's H.H. H. Holmes hunting territory. I knew this was going to be H.H. H. Holmes before I even started reading. Because you're just going to tell me a murder hotel. It's literally on the back. Murder hotel. That just tells me enough that it's H.H. H. Holmes. It is the man that inspired Hostel and Saw. Um, you read through this. At one point... Audrey becomes a victim to the devil. Um, but he doesn't think Audrey... He thinks Audrey's dumber than she is, and she's not. Um, what boils down to is it wraps back to book one where he was the one killing the people, and her brother was the one just wanting their organs. So... Yeah. Audrey has this scene where hit her and um, the devil are fighting. And she has a total badass moment. Because in Escaping from Houdini, Audrey was injured. And now walks with a cane and she has a limp. That kind of thing. Well, this book, she takes down him without her cane and she's limping and stuff and it's just it's one of those nail biters on the edge of your seat you think Audrey's not gonna make it out alive and she does because that would be a terrible ending and I would be really pissed if that's how it ended um, and it goes fantastically um, you know she survives and it's in the arms of Thomas at the end. Um, keep in mind, in this, Audrey and Thomas are supposed to get married within, like, the first 20 pages. Um, but apparently, Thomas's dad has betrothed him to another woman for political gain. All right. One moment, I need to take a drink. My mouth's getting dry. Um, and Audrey's beside herself like she doesn't want to be with anyone but Thomas Thomas is livid because Thomas's dad like this was his way of trying to micromanage him was betrothing him to somebody else um and it didn't work Thomas is like I'm gonna find a way out of this betrothal whether you like it or not um and this is where Audrey's grandmother comes to the fucking rescue um she apparently is pen pals with the queen um because her grandfather um because her grandfather um apparently like ran part of the east india trade company so there's like it's a whole freaking thing i don't remember exactly because it's been over a year and so 
she writes the queen, tells the queen of the betrothal, and the queen, you know, I wouldn't say gives her approval, but blesses their betrothal. So the father really now has no, grand to, no ground to stand on because as if you're going to argue with the queen. Like, you're not going to argue with the Queen of England when she says that your grandson, that your son is marrying this woman. And she would not be happy. So, that's the basic rundown of this. The love story between Audrey and Thomas and the whole plot points of the entire series. That's what happens. Now, in my opinion as the best to worst either storyline or pl how it was written like what I thought was the better books in the series to the worst give me one moment while I organize them and this may or may not become as a surprise my favorite book in this series was the last book just because Audrey finally has that moment where she is the full shining star then you have hunting prince dracula loved it because i didn't know what the fuck was going on stalking jack the ripper i it was good it would i still rate it five stars if i reread it probably not um and escaping from houdini when i first read it it was the lowest rated in this entire series and I still don't like it. I don't like the unnecessary love train that was in it. There was no need to have another love interest other than just to have one. It was only purely there for building drama. So, blue tabs means I've read them, just so you know. I do it on all my books so that if I ask somebody to pick a book for me for like a book reading thing, I can just send them a picture of my bookshelves and say, blue means I've read it, so that that's why you want to know. So this is my opinion of Stalking Jack the Ripper series. Down in the comments below, tell me what you thought when you read them. Um, but until next time, remember, you are loved and you are valid.